Welcome to Draw Process. I'm Ike, drawing the cover today of my comic First Sun and Sword, Crocodile City. It's the first episode of what I hope are many, uh, and I've already drawn the whole book on this uh, series of videos. Today is the cover, um, so I'm going to do some thumbnails um, and then draw the cover and hopefully get something I'm happy with. This is a much more finicky process for me than drawing a comic book page. But uh, we'll see what I do and, and uh, what I can share with you about that process. Okay, I forgot to hit record, pardon me on that, but I'm gonna go over all of these with the Sharpie in this video just to make it clear to you and to myself what the real basic shape language of these cover ideas are. I did a lot of ideas. Now I sat down to do this all I had to, well, honestly, I was not feeling inspired. I did not really connect with this task. I just knew I had to sit down and to do it. So I just made myself draw uh, covers in smaller thumbnails, one after the other. And as I went, uh, you know, made myself do it. And sometimes you got to work that way. You're not, uh, the inspiration, the muse doesn't come. You just start getting to work. Um, but as I worked, uh, I started to notice these motifs, like the, the crocodile silhouette or the crocodile shapes of the, of its teeth, of its snout, um, the, the shapes in the throne room and of the figures and how they might be, uh, arranged in a, a huddle. Um, and I just kind of recompiled those in different ways. And this first one that I did is actually the one I went with. Now, it's it's very, you know, action pose oriented here. Uh, the silhouette of the crocodile is at an angle uh, coming from like bottom left to upper right. The figures are going to be centered and you could say they're kind of in a triangle shape. Um, and then with that, that diagonal of the croc silhouette, uh, that felt like a pretty strong composition. I also like the thought of covers that incorporate uh, empty space, whether that's white or black, usually white. And I wanted to try that with this book. So I thought around that silhouette, there could be maybe no background at all. You'll see this idea here, just, uh, again, a diagonal, uh, it was this, the sword, uh, sword with his sword in his hand in the foreground, it's kind of silhouetted with sun chained up on the ground and King Croc behind him. You would see the full figure of King Croc. There's a story to that image. It was another idea. You know, this one just sword with his sword, maybe in that dungeon throne room, uh, another, you know, kind of very symmetrical with some, some triangle, um, shape to it. Again, when I uh, thinking of the art, um, kind of ripping out of the page, like leaving that, that empty white space, I thought, well, what if these were the upper and lower teeth and, and jaw and snout of, of King Croc? Uh, creating this triangle here and it's almost like the camera is looking through those the, the jaws the open mouth um, but I wouldn't actually draw the open mouth it would just be the jagged edge there um, through the figures in a slight different arrangement through the background in uh, it wasn't sure if it should even have one but I thought maybe it would a possible idea uh, it's not that one would be hard to make clear that what you're looking at with the empty space is uh, the, the croc mouth yeah you'll see that one I did a large one here because um, sometimes you should try changing the size of your thumbnail and see if you come up with a new idea under those new conditions. Uh, making it larger like this, I was looking at putting in some of the canals, bridges, uh, some of the city, 
some of the, the shapes of the city on the, the middle upper left. And then sword here, again with a nice kind of triangle, a diagonal of his arm and his body facing one way, the sword coming up the other way. Um, that, that balloon shape down there in the bottom left, that's Sun's head. And then Farah behind him, behind his sword, which is going to be hard to get just right without a tangent. And again, thinking maybe I'll use that, that croc upper and lower jaw, uh, ripping the page to give me the empty space. You'll see how I constructed that if you're, if you're watching the video. Um, yeah, the ideas are all pretty similar. I wasn't, um, I wasn't feeling that creative and I wasn't getting, uh, to too many interesting places. Um, but I, I just kept trying again. Um, I, yeah, I like, I like a dynamic, uh, cover. It, I thought, um, action capturing kind of an, an action pose, maybe even fighting on the cover would be nice. Like really lean into the, how action heavy the story is and how, how story heavy it is, character driven it is and show these characters in a fight scene. Um, which kind of gives it maybe, a kind of a classic feel, I guess, classic comic cover. If you think of the old Captain America covers or something, just, uh, uh, just punching a, a Nazi or something, right? Just, uh, just a, a fight scene on the cover. So yeah, this one's directional. They're all facing kind of to the right. They're kind of growing from the bottom left to the upper right or out to the right. Um, maybe put the silhouette of some some people they're fighting in front of them. I was I was picturing the the scene when they're on the raft fighting a bunch of guys, and that would be one way to go. Now, on the downside, this leaves out King Croc, and most he's a good chunk of the book. Uh, I guess half the book is King Croc, and it's in a way that's the most interesting kind of epic part that you want to show on a cover is the monster or the big, the big King Croc. So, um, I felt I was missing something with this one. Um, I noticed when I draw the comic, each panel is obviously kind of like a cover, you know, it's a work of art. There's design to it, but I can also just, um, get kind of in a, in a, a character acting or drawing mode where I'm just drawing the figures on the background, drawing them in the scene with the cover. It's a, it's very much so design oriented drawing. Um, it is the, the precise, like, uh, instead of thinking of the pose as this looks accurate, this is how the body should look. You're thinking, what are the precise shapes I need to get? In this and that spot on the cover and then I, and then I'll have to make the body fit those shapes I need um, I want uh, I think this is a lesson for me even on panels and uh, just in interior pages is um, if I can focus more on the 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 design the shape language of the panels and pose those figures in, in, in that way as, as best as possible. Um, it, it could create a, a nice, a nice looking page, a nice design. Um, it could make it a lot easier to draw more efficient, more, and, and the figures would maybe be more dynamic along those lines too. Um, I, to me that comes at a cost. Maybe it's kind of on a, on a spectrum, uh, uh, teeter totter there. So if you, if you go really into that, um, getting those shapes, right, sometimes your figures are less dynamic or less alive, uh, less detailed in a, uh, detailed isn't the right word. Um, yeah, they can look kind of stiff or blocky. Um, so, 
uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely something I, I want to do more of, but I know that it's something that uh, I'm not going to just throw away what I've been doing in order to do it. So here are the different designs. I'm just flipping through to show you those. Not too many of them, but I really liked that first one there. So here we go. Again, um, a little, it's a large space as well, instead of a small panel. It's important that all of these elements are positioned very well, very balanced and in proportion to each other at just the right angles. Um, Farah on the left here, her leg overlaps, you know, is seen behind sword's leg. Same thing for Sun. So I have to position Sun where some of his foot and, and ankle show behind sword. You'll notice I erase the characters a few times here um, and start over because I want to get just the right position centered on the paper um, and in relation to each other and the right angles too, like the angle of his legs coming out versus the angle of their legs and, and kind of getting his upper body straight, but there's each pointing out the to the sides and, uh, and their heights. Uh, Sun needs to be a, a kind of close to as tall as Farah needs to feel kind of balanced to the other side of the of the page there. Um, it's uh, I, I find it's nice though. Uh, it's the the drawing is it looks a little different than my interiors. It feels different when I draw it, but it is nice to produce. Uh, something more symmetrical like this, that's a little more carefully constructed. Um, again, something I want to do in the next book, Interiors. Here his sword is aiming right at the camera. There's a lot of foreshortening on the sword. Um, that was, you know, that was a sacrifice to this pose um, that I have him in that I want you to see some length to the sword. I want, and I also want it to break his silhouette some so it stands out, uh, going kind of outside the, the, the outline of his figure. So that's why I have it quite low between his legs so that breaks his silhouette and off to the side there um, so that it breaks his silhouette there too uh, I could have gone with just a sword that's kind of straight down the middle uh, this this camera is looking down at them somewhat not too much um, but some and that is to give the feeling of the large King Croc. It's kind of like a POV of King Croc at them, and you'll see his silhouette covering them. Now, this definitely is exaggerated. If you read the book, King Croc is not, you know, 30 feet tall. <laughs> but this is this is the feeling you get from the way I, I set up the, the cover. Uh, that, you know, again, the cover is not like the interiors. This is design and not um, needing to fit the continuity precisely. So yeah, I was uh, pretty happy with how it came together. Uh, also kind of weird for me to draw figures that aren't in an environment. Um, the, the silhouette, the outline of the characters becomes more important uh, for that reason, too. Uh, I like to use heavy shadows, and I can't place shadows on the ground or background to help uh, kind of ground the figures to the environment or to the ground beneath them. Um or to help me with some of the shadow 
placement decisions to make on the figures. Um, I like to use, you know, blocks, chunks of black to indicate shadow on my figures. But for this cover, uh, I, it needs, because of the way I have these figures positioned, I need them to appear balanced with each other. Um, so sword should have the most black and white, the highest contrast, perhaps. Uh, he's in the foreground. So it makes sense for that to be the case. And then because Farah is behind him, and I don't want to obscure uh, her, her features, there's not much black on her. Uh, there's not much on Sun either. I did this in an uh, 05 micron, same as the interiors. And I have Sword in his regular clothing. Uh, in a lot of the book, he's in underwear, you know, basically. The thought there was that when he travels uh, underwater, basically swimming into the throne room, he did not want to be weighed down by anything. So it would, it would make sense to, uh, to do that. Uh, I actually, I actually Googled it. Like how, how much slower would you be if you had clothing on? And apparently a lot slower. Uh, I forget, I forget what, st there was a study that, that showed that, uh, that was me being kind of anal. It isn't that big a deal, but, but I was thinking to myself, is that, was that realistic that he would really want to, you know, undress before he goes on a deep dive. Uh, and yeah, I, th I thought, I thought it made sense to me, but I wanted to double check. Uh, it's surprising how much research can go into, uh, into comics. Um, and into like the little details and things you want to put in it that you might just want to double check. Um, As I place these blacks, I'm able to see much better. You know, if I was, if I'm happy with those choices, you'll notice I'm going to add a little more than what I had originally outlined for. As I go, I get a, a better look, and and I'm being more meticulous than usual, which can make this more kind of make it harder, um, or make it make it worse in a way, because uh, I it's the cover. There's a lot of pressure on me to do a good cover. And, uh, so, and I feel I should put extra time into it. So that extra um, attention is not, um, not always the best because you end up um, thinking of extra things to fiddle with, extra questions to ask and, and choices to make and then you you change something that didn't need to be changed you add something that didn't need to be added so there's that um spending the last week or two doing this i think two weeks doing this cover and then book design stuff the logo and the interior um extra pages copyright page and some some sketchbook stuff in the back and so on um that has been eating up my time. I've done very little drawing and it has become very clear to me uh, how important it is that I make sure to carve out time, that I make sure to make it a priority to maintain my practice of drawing comics. Um, I should have written this next issue before now. Now I'm stuck with needing to take some time to write the issue before I can start drawing it. Um, that Putting that work in ahead of time could have saved me from having to pause my practice. But also, drawing in my sketchbook, drawing anatomy, I have paused those to a degree because this book design task is so all-consuming. Uh, that I push aside uh, too easily that practice. Uh, and so it's been kind of a, 
it just showed me how important those things are to me, um, both to, you know, my, my, uh, confidence and, uh, and, and skill and those sorts of things. So here is the finished, uh, inked page. And there it is without the logo just yet. I went with this kind of bold, simple color design because it matches the interiors. And, and, uh, and that was my first idea is to try something that matches the interiors uh, in that way. And I really liked how it looked. It's basically all the same color. There's a gradient on the crocodile. This was the first logo attempt. You saw the sketch for it, the inks, the colors, or at least one color idea. But then I changed it to this one. Uh, this one, I like how it is a little more savage, a little more like prehistoric looking, which, which suits this book. This is more of like a Bronze Age kind of book. Um, and a lot of other lettering designs that, that might fit a sword and sorcery fantasy book, they tend to look more gothic, uh, medieval or something like that. And I wanted this to have a different different feel than that. So um, this felt right. Uh, I just built these with vector lines. There's no font here. Um, and it's, it's quite a change from my initial sketch. Uh, I've got the Clever Kaiju logo on there because... Uh, and then there's, there's going to be some information in the book about Clever Kaiju because that, that community is important to me. And I'm going to co-publish this with the Clever Kaiju community and brand because um, I think we can do better things together than I can do on my own uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing uh, Clever Kaiju and sharing uh, my, my book with, with Clever Kaiju so and that's it so I hope next week I have a video for you uh, but I might need to take one week off to to get the story written for the next issue, or at least enough of it to start drawing. Uh, this has been a great experience uh, sharing my process making this book, and this is it. This is the end of sharing that process and the beginning of getting that book to you and out there in the world. Uh, so that's wonderful. And thank you for joining me on that journey. Uh, even if this is your first, uh, first time joining, I hope you can be the practice of your art and I plan on doing the same, uh, every day, getting up and working towards becoming uh, my practice of the art. See ya.